Wilson art. They're not paying me anything. They should. I use it all the time. I should call those people. Anyway, this is going to be an anticlimactic uh, reveal because you've already seen what I'm using. I had some left over from another job, so I already put it on some of the parts and pieces in there. But anyway, let's unbox it for those that uh, this is their first video. I want to treat you guys good. Ta-da! Gray with a black stripe. Not really. Not really. That would be ridiculous. And now for the flop. These come in four by eight sheets. You can get a countertop and a dinette table out of them real easy. Probably can't hardly see that. Can we get in there? There you go. It's that yellow one that we really like. Remember Debbie from Illinois? She kind of was the first to use that with us. And I think it was a really good choice. So I just, I just want to let it lay out, kind of relax a little bit. Because this is a part that you glue down and it's already curling up. It just, it just adds a little trouble. And we don't... We don't need this space for right now. We're working on something else. So we're gonna let this kind of roll out and then uh, we've got to get our measurements for our sink counter, kitchen counter, and uh, we're gonna reassess that table and see what we can do with the table. We might reuse it. It's in pretty good shape, but I don't know that it's gonna work with this. That's what we're gonna do. And I'll, I'll show you that as we go because we gotta do that before we do this. So. Uh, yeah, it's time to put the Wilson art on. I had high hopes for this table. I mean, I knew that they didn't use Wilson art or Formica back in the day. They used just some kind of fiberboard, masonite. I don't know. But it, now that's, wait a minute. That's almost like a Formica coating on it. But why would they put it on that? To put it on this. So this is only half inch thick. That, that's really not that great. And see, here's, here's one of the things, or some of the things, that as I go through the Shasta build, that I don't understand. So they use this mason. I maybe, I don't know, is that all they had at the time? I don't know. But it looks like a Formica Wilson Art type product, but put on to masonite and then glued onto this half inch. But then even they knew that a half inch really wasn't stable, not for a bed. So look at what they did. They framed it out. I, if I were to cost it out, I would think that three quarter plywood, I mean, for all the extra work that you, I mean, you gotta pay a man by the hour when he's working in your factory. Seems like by the time you paid him and you put this extra on there and you glued that, you spent the money on the glue, why, why not just get you some Wilson art like we did and you get you a three quarter piece of ply? I don't know. There's probably somebody way smarter than me about Shasta, which is probably 99% of all Shasta owners that probably know the answer to that. I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm just going to cut out a three-quarter, but I'm not in the Shasta business either. So, it's been a long day. I didn't mean to be grumpy with you. So, what we're going to do, all I need for this is my tape measure, my pencil, my old table, jigsaw. So I went and, well the reason this isn't gonna fit is this is 30 inches. Between the dinette seats, I have 34. I thought I did it exactly as they did it. Yes, I didn't. It'll be all right though. It's gonna be, it's always 82 wide. It'll be fine. So, I need to make mine 34, and it's exactly 34. Now, this one is 36, which is fine, so I made ours 36. That doesn't matter. 36, 36. 
So, I want to bring this over to this one, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace these edges because I've got to add these four inches. So that'd be two inches to each side. So I could accomplish that by squaring this up and there's our first cut. Then I just slide it over here, square it up, square it up I said. Don't tell me they're not square. What in the heck? That's square enough, there we go. We just gotta get this little edge off. Now, you know, you're, you're sliding in and out of your dinette. You don't want to, you know, cut yourself off at the waist with uh, these rough corners. All right, so we're done with that. Now, all we really have to do is just cut these little areas off here. So I'll give that a quick once over right here. thing that I need to use. Let me show you real quick. I forgot that we're going to use the sander. I put some 60 grit on it. Very aggressive. Very, it's kind of like my voice right now. I'm, it's, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. I'll relax. So you can, I don't know if you can see this at all, but it's kind of not perfect at all. So this very aggressive 60 grit It'll smooth it out. It'll smooth it out. Now, if you want to make those smooth and rounded, you got to keep moving. Boom, 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 just like that. And then keep it going across here because you don't want to dip right there. Okay? So you make this flat, but then round it, round it, round it. And that's what we did on that piece right there. Now all I gotta do is do this other one and then I'm gonna make sure I've got enough contact cement and we're gonna go ahead and get our Wilson art and maybe lay some down on this. I don't know, I might go ahead and cut out the, uh, the, kind of the kitchen countertop too. Just do them both at the same time, why not? I don't know, it's been a long day, let's make it longer. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get a quick test fit in. Got them both rounded off. As you can see, that's a good fit. That's a good fit. Pretty tight on that side, about uh, three eighths to a half on that side. So that's plenty, no problem at all. So I thought, hey, as long as I'm in here, let's get a measurement for kitchen countertop. All right, we're looking at uh, 38 and all the way across is 24. So I'll probably go maybe three quarters of an inch over 24. So call it 24 and three quarters. Now on this side, we really can't have much overhang. Well, it might have a little bit, but that's where the stove goes. The stove will be fitting, sitting right there. So we don't want to, you know, encroach on the stove a lot. But over here, we want to maybe have three quarters of an inch to an inch. So. Let's see, that was 24 and three quarters we agreed on. This is 38, so we'll go 39. So 24 and three quarters by 39. And then uh, I'm gonna have to check the placement on the, the uh, sink. We're gonna use the original sink and make sure it's not interfering with anything down and around here. So I'll get that cut out and uh, I may wait till the morning and run in and get that contact cement. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Good morning. I got a good night's sleep. I'm in a better mood today. All right, here's what we're gonna need for our job today. Obviously, we've got our Formica, or Wilson Art. They're not paying me either one, but you should be nice to them. So, it's flipped upside down, obviously, because that's where we're going to put our Contact cement. This stuff works really great. Really great. They're not paying me either. Nobody pays me. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, this stuff works great. Really great. Carpet knife. 
Maybe, maybe not. Four foot level. So my first step is number one, to get the upside down. The upside has to be down so that when you flip it back up, you didn't do it backwards. Sometimes it doesn't matter, sometimes it matters. So I'm gonna trace this out just real quick. And it's not perfect. I just want to get an idea of where I'm at on here. Because I don't want to waste this material. A small camper may come in, somebody may say, hey, I just need you to do, make me a table. Would you make me a table? Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's somebody I, I've been camping with or I filmed there. Like, make me a table. I said, well, sure, I can make you a table. I've got this extra material. I saved it. And then sometimes you can just do a good deed and be a nice person. So let me get this off of here. Get this off of here. So I don't know if you can see those lines or not. But they're right here. So flipping this whole thing over would kind of be an issue. So I know that I don't want to cut right on the lines because if you do and you miss by an eighth or a quarter, there's no coming back from that. You got to redo it. It's just contact cement. It's nearly instantaneous. So what I want to do is I want to I come over about it inch inch and a quarter like that just the width of this and that'll give me really what i need and so i'll just come right down here make myself a new line i'll cut that line i'll do the same over here because i left just about two inches two and a half between these and so i can cut right here and then that's going to give me what i need now on this deal I'm going to do the same thing. We can really go a little bit more. There's not a whole lot of reason that we're going to save this much, but you never know. You never know. I try to save it. All right, and then I'll come up here on this guy, come up a little bit. Just because when I lay it down, I need a little bit of play front to back. It's the side to side that, that really kind of causes the problem, but if I could square it up, on either the top or the bottom and then lay it directly down especially on a piece that's square because this is square down this whole thing square rectangle and then this is square down here so if i can lay it down this way then i have a much better odds way higher percentage shot of not messing this up so didn't need the tape measure this trip so i'm going to go ahead and try to cut this down If you give it kind of a good, good solid cut like that, it might, I'm going to have to go all the way, I think. So it didn't matter how much of this I save, really, at this point. So I'm going to go all the way up here. Give it that. Now, maybe I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Follow that line very carefully. Well, that's not very carefully, is it? We'll get close. There, I felt that one go through. That's what we gotta do. We gotta get through it, mostly so that it breaks where we want it to break and not chip off into our work area. See, that, that did it. That did it for sure. Let's slip this under here. See if we can get that to give us a clean break right through here. It wants to, I'm telling you. Let's give it a little more juice right here with the knife. There we go. Now we're making hay. All right, nice and easy here. Oh, yeah, we're through, we're through. Okay, now, I can take this whole piece. You could do definitely a kitchen cabinet or kitchen countertop out of this. You could easily do 
a dinette table. So I'm going to set it off to the side, put it up in the storage with some other pieces that I have, and they maybe at some point I can do somebody a solid. Why not? Why not? Camper people are nice. All right, I'm going to finish this cutting. You don't want to watch me cut anymore. That was disastrous at best. So I'll go ahead, I'll get it cut off camera, and I'll bring you back here in a minute. Next step, get my handy dandy contact adhesive. I'm gonna spray this wood down really good just because it's thirsty. It'll suck it up pretty good. So I'll run that through here real quick. I get kind of he heavy on the edges. Even though we're gonna put trim on it, you really want it to go heavy. You want it to stick on those edges really, really well. Because if you don't and it starts bubbling up, it's going to be embarrassing. Nobody wants to be embarrassed about that. So I'm going to get this around this edge real good as well. Even though there's going to be trim on that, if you've ever seen a 1960 Shasta, there's some three-quarter trim on there that matches the rest of the trim, especially the trim right there on the dinette. And we like it when there's trim because that gives us a little option to make a mistake sometimes. Because it happens. You know it happens. Okay, I'm going to pull this off to the side real quick. Now I'm going to do the same process right here. Even though we weren't planning on using this extra inch, inch and a half, you never know where it's going to fall. So you want to make sure that you give yourself an inch or two of... Oh, don't put your hand on that, idiot. Give yourself an inch or two right there. Because there's going to be mistakes made. I'm not real worried about getting this far because we know that's back where that sink is going. But we'll go around the edge of it real good. I hope that makes you feel good, me doing that pattern for you. Those of you with OCD, you'll find that very pleasurable. You know who you are. All right, we'll get this good. Make sure, like I said, make sure on the edges. We go over here. That's really almost dry. It's a little not dry, but we don't care about that all that much because we're going to let it sit probably for at least eight hours or so. We might not even trim it out until tomorrow, depending on what else I have to do. Um, so now here's the tricky part. I'm gonna marry these two pieces together. Now remember, I know this is square, I know that's square. So I want to get over here and get my lip on the edge. And let's say I'm a quarter inch there, I'm a quarter inch there. I think I want to come over a little, oh, see how that's already sticking? I'm telling you, your time is limited. All right, I feel better there and there. So if I'm square right now, this should lay down real nice. So I'm going to ease it, oh, watch it, that's what I mean, it'll get you if you don't pay attention, and I wasn't paying attention. There, I've got that, I've got that, let's ease this into place, I like it, I like it, boom, done, 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 done. Okay, now, I'm going to take and flip this over, like this. I'm just gonna rub it down, make sure they're touching each other, like that, just good. It feels like that's really catching hold. Next thing I'll do is I'll take some boards, put across here, and then I'll add some weight to it so that there's no, there'd be no discussion on whether or not it had the time to bond. So I'll do that right now, you don't need to watch that. Then I'm gonna do that the same way I did this, 
You don't need to watch that. You know what I'm going to do. But when I get ready to finish them out, I'm going to show you. I'm going to router the table. Bottom of the table, there is our Wilson Art. This is my router. Let me show you the blade. It's got this little bearing on it that'll go against that three-quarter ply, and that will tell the router where to go. This is a flush router bit. So I have to turn this carefully over so I don't chip everything. So let me flip it over here. There we go. Let's see, why don't we set it like that? Hey, here we go. All right, just gonna turn this on and then I'm gonna carefully go around the outside edge. So let's see. save that because as we talked about there may be something that we'll use this on and we'll want to have that we may just need a little piece and we don't want to mess it up we are not going to save those ends we'll put those in the trash but we'll save this let me get that out of the way now let's see how we did we want to use a, a nice bit don't use an old raggedy bit that you've been using because it will chip this chip it to heck and then you know we've got probably a 16th eighth at the most of that trim that we're going to use that we're going to put on right now but you know that's only if you make a mistake we don't want to plan on making a mistake so get you a good bit they're expensive don't get me wrong but I'll tell you they are good if you take care of them so here's where we're at so there's where we're at all right so now I have got to Take the uh, three quarter, and you can see it's got it's probably an eighth, somewhere around an eighth right there on that L. And this will go down this three quarter, and then this will just catch that top right there on the lip. So I have some extra just in case we don't uh, make it all the way through. So all I need for this job is my drill and the screws that came with the trim. And I'll put a couple of them in, and then I'm quite sure Rush is gonna fast forward to this just for the sake of uh, the viewers. He's nice like that. Well, if you haven't tuned out, 
As you can see, you just gotta be careful bending that. You can bend it with your hands. You don't need to use a hammer or heat it up or anything. That's what it's designed to do is to make those corners. As you can see, I'm a little short on the trim right here. So I've got another piece. So what I'll do is I'll go inside, I'll measure this and uh, I'll put that right there. Down here is gonna be where it attaches to the wall. So we're not concerned about trim on that right now. So once I get that going, we're gonna be okay. That's how I do my tables. I'm gonna go, I think, oh, I saved the leg. Let me go grab that leg. We're gonna install it too. The original leg. Look at how beautiful that came out. I sanded all that old varnish off it. Went with some amber shellac. Really nice. Now, we gotta make sure that this is centered. And they came off of the front on the original table about seven inches-ish. So I'm just gonna make a mark at about seven. We already know that this is 34. So we're gonna be at 17. So where that X is, is where the middle is gonna be. So we're gonna go somewhere in this neighborhood like that. So I think, I don't know. I think I'm gonna put my leg here, but I'm gonna make some marks in here because I want it to be just like this. And that's pretty well centered. All right, made my marks, got my drill. I'm using a number 10 three quarter screw on this yeah, because we are at three quarters of an inch right here alone on the leg, but this is, there's a 16th or so in there. So we're not in any danger of going through. And this number 10 will do the job. It's a pretty thick screw for this application. I think it's gonna work pretty perfectly. There we go. You can hear it kind of hit catching the ugga ugga. That's what we want to hear right before we strip it out. All right, so if we go here and we know we've got our mark right there, I think I'm gonna follow that into right there. Same thing, this is three quarter as well. So we should be in the money, but man, that's for mica. Oh, wait a minute, that's not right. What is happening here? Woo, good thing I checked. That's a number 10 by one inch got in there. Man, that would have been deadly. Now there's a three quarter. That's gonna fit. Whew. I would have been redoing this whole thing. You would have heard me say a bad word. Got the whole channel shut down. All right, I think we are pretty well good right there. Let me get that one in. Well, get that right one. Right, right about that is it. All right. All right, I'll go get that other screw here in a minute. But as you can see, right there, up, down. We'll probably uh, put a little holder on here and then put an eyelet on the floor that it can hold into that. I'm pretty sure there was one on this when I took it off. No, there's not because I don't see the leg. And plus I'll put a catch up here so that when they put it up, it'll just snap into place and it doesn't sit around and bounce. So there's that. And without the catch on it, how about that? That's just about as beautiful. Uh, how can you see that? There you go, with that trim on it. So, that's how we do the table.